Good morning, good evening, and welcome to this week's Fibrific Live Craft and Chat. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. If you can see me, you guys know the drill. I got sucked into the chat, okay? The chat, I, what's with the chicken? I kind of, I've missed some stuff. And um, what's with the chickens in the chat? Seriously. Um, I, I don't even know. I don't even, like... Wow. Okay, so I did start a second late. Um, I was I was adding something in and um, I went on a little adventure. But now we also have we have Louis Cam tucked down in the corner. I haven't got him a frame yet, but I'll get him a little frame eventually. Um, but there he is, sleeping, sleeping, all in the corner. Um, can you guys see him okay down there? He's on the bottom left. So um, anyway, we've got Louis Cam, so we'll be able to keep an eye on him when he goes bolting off. So if you guys just see him all of a sudden like get up and go to bolt, it's because he's about to go and cause shenanigans. Um, oh, you can hear now that the volume is up. That is awesome. Um, yeah, that, that helps. That legit helps. Like, and thank you for the thumbs up, whoever just thumbs up. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so we have got... We are on to, oh, we're talking about pineapple chicken pizza. Oh, I mean, that's, that's like, that's like my favorite pizza. Oh, okay. There we go. Look, I need to move Louie up so he doesn't cover your comments. But if I put that there, then I, maybe I just need to make Louie a little bit littler. Little Louie cam. There we go. We'll just bring him down a little. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. Pineapple chicken pizza. That's the bomb. That's the best. That's the best pizza. I think that I, I'm, I'm tossed because I like that and pepperoni. So, you know, it depends on my mood. What's my mood saying? Okay. Um, so I wanted to jump straight in. We've got a little bit of housekeeping. So uh, we are going to be having caffeinated crafters tonight. So those of you that are local, head on down to the coffee club at the Hyperdome. And uh, from around six o'clock, there'll be a group of us sort of hanging out, crafting. You can buy your dinner, you can grab a coffee, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, everyone does something a little bit different, so you don't have to worry. Um, and just, you know, enjoy, enjoy, um, uh, enjoy time together crafting. We don't get much craft done, really. But the plan is to craft. The plan is to craft. Um, but usually we wouldn't have one on, on this Thursday. This is the fifth Thursday of the month. We don't normally have one. Uh, but next week it will be um, Good Friday Eve. And we thought of ha we had a bit of a discussion and decided let's let's not. Let's not crash that because pe some people go away, things like that. So we've pulled it forward. Um, so this week, Caffeinated Crafters is on tonight. Then the next one will be the third Thursday of April. So back to the normal, you know, run of the mill stuff. Um, so is that all it for housekeeping? I think that was it. That was it. Oh, I have gone in and added the timestamps to last week's live craft and chat. I realized last night I hadn't done it. So I jumped in yesterday. Or, well, I realized yesterday I hadn't done it. So I jumped in last night and added those in. Um, so it is definitely, um, it's there, there now. So you can just go to the times. And also we do have our, um, our audio back because I'm live streaming it with the right software. So fingers are crossed that it's nice and loud. Hopefully it doesn't make anyone's ears bleed. But in saying all of that, uh, I got us all ready. Like last week I said that I would make it ready so that we would be doing a new dice roll straight away so that we can try and get an extra dice roll in each week. So uh, let us jump down to here. So I have, I finished off the yellow, uh, the duckling row and I um, also added on a main color um, flamingo row. So we are ready straight up for another dice roll. Who cares if you craft so long as it's time well spent. I agree with you. Oh, Sally, I would super appreciate you doing that for me. If you could add that into the group, I would very much appreciate it. Bob Curran is on the go slow internet again. Oh, Bob, that's got to be frustrating. Um, wanting to make a dragon scale dice bag for my daughter was following a really crap tutorial on YouTube. Hopefully I can find a better one. There was a really good 
written pattern that a lot of people I know used. I'll see if I can find it, but it was not a video tutorial. But if you've learned how to make the scales, then the rest of the pattern should be okay to follow. Um, now, I have been trying as hard as I can so that these colours um, are not terrible, but that it's, it's just bad. I, we have to accept that. So after each live stream, I'll post a photo update over on Instagram um, of where we're up to so you can get an idea of like the true colours uh, because these are not the true colours, everybody. This is the best I can do so as not to destroy the webcam. Um, okay, so I had to... Sp Gamer Widows is late. So I'm late. I had to clean up my spilt tea from the carpet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I was running a bit late and all I've got is this little cup of water. Let me know in the chat what you've got. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready to get, get it going? First roll of today. Oh, <laughs> I should probably have some dice if I'm going to have a dice roll. So let's go. And I'm going to press the button. I've increased the volume. So if you're in headphones, be prepared. She says it's so quiet that nobody can hear it. Okay, let's go. It's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time. Roll the dice to choose the next color. All right, dice roll time. Let's get the dice rolling. We're going to use the light green one today to start off the day. We have a five. Five is parrot. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's a nice. Br this is a good red. This is a good red. You know how some reds are like orange reds? Well, I don't like orange reds. This is a solid good red. Okay, let me read here. Good morning, Friday Ketchup. How are you going? Um, yeah, very funny, John. Very funny. <laughs> very funny. All right, I've joined on my color. So we're just going to be going straight across with our single crochets. It's not super contrasty on the pink, but it's still a good solid red. Um, Sally, why don't you put your feet up and just enjoy the live stream so that, you know, Leanne's here and, and we're just going to craft. Hopefully I won't send her off onto too many journeys. Just, just enjoy the live stream and chill. And if you happen to have a nap, you have a nap. Okay. Was that too loud, John? That's my question. Was, John says, okay, that was loud. Was it too loud? Uh, Freaky says, wow, first time hearing that. I, I can adjust the volume, I think. Um, so let me know. But I did want it to be a little bit like, you know, I did want it to be a little loud. A little bit loud. So what's everyone been doing this week? I have been, like, there was this box in my bedroom that was just annoying me. And I'm like, what's in this box? And I realized, because like we've, we've had to pull every, we, we had to close down our storage shed. So everything from our storage is now in our house, which is really frustrating because I was just starting to feel like our house was a house again. Now it's no longer like a house. Um, anyway, so there was this one box that was in my bedroom that it was just like, seriously, what are you? You're a cardboard box for a start, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I try to ditch all the cardboard and replace it with crates. Um, and... I'm like, what is in it? And then I realized it was it was a gift from when we were at when we were when Fiberific was over at Fiberific HQ, so a few years ago. Um, one of the amazing viewers of the live stream sent me this very generous gift, was which was an a box of I happen to have them here. These Premier Yarns Candy Shop Long Color Repeats, and I remember we've been having a discussion um, that it was that it was, um, yeah, it, it, I hadn't really used any long colour repeats and so she sent me this box and I think off the top of my head, I think there's seven balls, I think, because um, there, there's three in each packet plus there's an extra ball. So I think it's seven balls. Um, and so I've been trying to come up 
with projects for it. But the colour repeats are very long, so I couldn't do any of the cool colour pooling projects, which I definitely want to try. Um, I haven't gone there yet, and I know that's so last year, but I haven't tried it and I want to get in on it. So I'm just doing a really basic brick stitch um, project so that, you know, some of the colour repeat change transitions could actually be hidden in the off-row. So where you do, it's one of those stock standardy start off with a row of single crochets or trebles, whatever your favourite is, and then um, just um, one row is three trebles in each of the spaces and then to make the spaces it's a single crochet three chains and skip three you know the drill anyway you may not know the drill I'll find a pattern and put it in the fun zone but um but it's working up it's working up just fine doing that but I'm still finding that every now and again the transition comes on a brick side rather than the the chain side so I do notice it and it's just like, it is bothersome. I don't like it. So it's like, I'm definitely one of these people that if you're going to have a color transition, make the transition the same length as the other colors so that you don't have these weird little sections in the middle. I'm sure knitted, it would probably look fine, but crocheted, I'm a bit like, oh, okay. Um, let me have a look here in the questions everyone's answering my question it did catch your attention Kathy that's good um John said it was louder than your speaking level I also have surround sound so you came in Dolby 5.1 that's terrifying um you are quiet in comparison but it was louder I think a good volume I know I'm in headphones okay so what you're saying is don't touch it we only hit that button a couple of times during a live stream and you generally warned I don't normally just sneak in although that would be pretty fun too um Angela says, my mom has her birthday on Saturday, so she and I will be celebrating that. That sounds like fun. I went and visited my mum last weekend. That was cool. Um, Sal's in recovery mode. I'm glad to hear that, Sally. Um, Angela, uh, have cake for me. Yeah. Uh, Angela says, even if I could have cake, I definitely would. Yeah, there's definitely some fun things. So um, I had an appointment with my dietitian, which was fun. Um, I was just like, okay, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty down pat with the plan now. Uh, although I am a little bored with some of the options and she was so excited and she was like, okay, all right, let, what about this? What do you, do you like this? And I'm like, yes, I love this. So we've got some, oh, hello. Um, um, we've used up the yarn buff. Actually the red didn't have too much of a yarn buff, but, um, but yeah, so We'll see if it ends up, you know how sometimes you're like, woohoo, I think I did it. I think I pulled it out and got just the, the right bit. But then you get sort of part the way through the ball and then you realize, oh my gosh, no, I've actually just been making it worse all this time. Um, that's probably my luck. But anyway, so super happy, awesome appointment with a dietitian. Very positive, came out feeling awesome. Um, I mean, I usually do. She's a pretty nice lady. So um we're just going to keep doing what I'm doing just with some cool extra new recipes and some fun stuff it's like tons of Mexican recipes because she was like okay what's the takeaway that is your absolute favorite that if you have the opportunity you get it like every night and I'm like oh my gosh Guzmini Gomez absolutely hands down Guzmini Gomez burrito bowl Spicy grilled chicken with saute veg. That's it. That's my favorite. That's, that's my, I don't know if I'd have that every night, but I would have this mini Gomez every night. Anyway, so she was just like, oh my God, yes, Mexican food. So she's got me all these really cool looking, um, beefy, uh, not beefy, beanie salads. And, and they just, they sat like the ingredients is just like, it's so much lime and just all my favorite flavor profiles. Not the hugest fan of all the bean stuff, but I'll take it if I get the extra flavors on top of it. And she actually said it's the salad dressings that make these ones. So, and it's still salad weather here. So I'm like, cool. That is awesome. Um, and we had a big talk because I, I can't eat a lot of bread. And, and she was actually saying that one of the hardest things when she's going through stuff with people is explaining to them that they need to reduce their bread. And so not having to do that with me is kind of refreshing because I just don't eat much bread at all already. So like if I have two pieces, um, like, you know, I, I probably eat four pieces a week of, of bread, maybe, maybe six, like 
I'm thinking sandwiches, like a sandwich here, eggs on toast there. Um, but yeah, four to six slices a week. And she was like saying there's some people who have that a day. I was just like, oh, no, that would not be good. Uh, Sally says, oh, my God, oh, my God, hot chips are the best. Look, oh, GYG hot chips are the best. GYG hot chips are pretty solid. I don't normally get them, um, but I have had them because Tim gets them sometimes. And he's like, do you want a chip? And I'm like, yes. Like, who says no to a chip? Anyway, but yes, they are. They're so tasty. Um, uh, Game Widow says, have pile of fabric in front of me that needs cutting out and sewing into bags just in paralysis mode. Um, I get that. I get that. Are you going to share with the group why you have such a large pile of fabric and why you have paralysis mode? I know we shared it with another, like with our with our friends yesterday, but I don't know if you're ready for the public. See, Game Widows, bread is life. Yeah, I don't like, I'm not a big fan. Burrito bowls are so easy. Yeah, I reckon they would be. Um, I just, you know, if it's garlic bread or fresh baked bread, I'm net. Look, I will say that if I go to a restaurant and I have the option to share garlic and cheese bread with somebody, I just want a bit. I don't want the whole lot. Although <clears throat> I really do want the whole lot, but I don't want the whole lot. Um, then I will order it every time. I do like garlic and cheese bread for sure. Um, and, and I have learned to not bake my own bread because that just breaks all the rules. Then I'm just like, nope, I've got to eat it. It's delicious. Must eat the whole loaf. And so, and because there's no preservatives in homemade bread, if you don't eat it within one to two days, it's trouble. And then I started making my own fruit loaf and that was just as bad. That was like evil, bad. Oh my God. Between Tim and myself, we were polishing off an entire loaf of fruit bread in two days. Actually, Abby, Abby eats fruit bread now because back in the day, back in the day, she wouldn't eat fruit bread. So now she would, but yeah, but I don't make it. I don't buy it. We don't eat it. Um... Holly said, I always have a hard time giving up bread. Look, and she said, it's so common that most people do. And not just because they love bread, but because it's the easiest, like, lunch option, fast breakfast option. It's, you know, like, you don't have to think about it. Oh, I'm just going to have a sandwich for lunch, you know. Oh, I'm just going to have some toast with honey for breakfast, whatever, you know. And it's just these fast options that you don't think about. It's just something that fills you up, gets you moving because it's a, it's a fast, fast meal. And, um, so yeah, so she was just like, it's like, it's just one of those things. Fruit loaf. John's wondering what fruit loaf is. Um, so it's basically like a sweet bread, like raisin toast. I don't know. Do, is this a UK Australian thing, guys? Let me know in the chat. Um, so basically it's like a, sort of like a sweeter bread that has like sultanas and spices and other dried fruits mixed through it. But not tons. It's mostly bread, but it's got like, you know, some. Oh, John's just spotted Louis. Can't, did Louis move? Is that what happened? Did Louis move? Gave it away. Uh, hot chips with chicken salt. Yeah, look, you know, if you can get, um, if you can get solid chips, like chips are good, you know. Um, Bianca's like, what about low carb, high protein bread? Look, if you have to have bread, I suppose that's the way to go. I just don't, I just don't eat bread. So it's the biggest problem for me was finding healthy lunch options that, that weren't involving bread or a sandwich or something that was still fast and easy because I would just, so you guys have to understand, I didn't have the fast and easy lunch. I just had no lunch. So now I'm having to make a meal that I previously just didn't have. And so for me, it's not about like having the bread and taking it out. It's about, I have to actually make a whole other meal. I actually have to make two whole other meals that I wasn't having. So breakfast and lunch, I wasn't having breakfast and lunch. So, or at least not every day. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, um, it's definitely one of those things. Um, I like cinnamon raisin bread. Would that be considered fruit bread? Probably. Yeah. Very likely. Um, I'm going to have to do some Googling, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't mind wraps. I love, I love wraps. And she's sent me the link of a really cool wrap that's like fully 
super awesome for for our plan. Um, I can't. Remember. It's got it's got it's got protein in it. It's got the right amount of carbs, the right amount of salt, the right amount of fat, like all the things. John says, "I'm French, Irish, and Portuguese. I'm programmed to love bread. Hello, English, Irish, and Scottish. Me too." My mu that was my mum's problem when she was going on her weight loss journey was she had to give up bread and bread was pretty much what she ate. That was her thing. Um, yep. Yeah. So yeah, but I just, yeah, I've, I'd had, I had to give up bread like a few years back because of other health issues. Um, was going to put a link for the fruit bread, but the link was too long. Okay. That's, so the link was over 200 characters long. That's a long link. That's a long link. Um, gosh. But yeah, so we've come up with like all these things that are super fast that will mean I actually eat the meal because that's the trick. Like I just didn't have lunch. It wasn't like I was having bad lunches. I just didn't have lunch. So I have now for breakfast, it's usually like a higher protein porridge um, or oatmeal, I think is what you guys in the US call it. Um, with, it's got some almonds and bits and bobs in it. Um, and, or I have, uh, eggs on toast. One of the few times I have bread with like, I, I, I make up this evil, I actually checked with a dietitian about my evil concoction that I like to have with my eggs on toast, which is butter, garlic, mushrooms, herbs, spinach, cherry tomatoes, like all cooked off as and, and I thought she was just going to like veto the butter like be like you can have it if you can steam it and I'm thinking I don't want to steam it but she was like no nope, it's cool <laughs> I was like okay she's like how much butter are you having is it like half a block and I'm like ah uh, no it's like a tablespoon it's enough to sort of soak into the mushrooms a little bit with the garlic and she was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, totally cool. Have that. That sounds delicious. I want that. I'm just like, it's so good. Anyway, um, and then, uh, so some days, some days I have the eggs and stuff. Some days I just have the stuff on toast. Um, I call it stuff, like, sorry. It's like, you know, if I've got capsicum, I throw capsicum into it. It's like whatever's in the fridge. Um, uh, Angela said, I went low carb. In 2017, thought bread would be my downfall. Surprisingly, I didn't miss it. Like, I'm, I'm not on a low-carb diet, um, but I, I, I use my carbs in pasta because we have worked out I do not like the pulse pastas. Like, they're fine. They're, they do the job, whatever. I prefer the boring old fresh pasta that, I, that you know, that I usually get, right? Um, or make, or, or, you know, even the, even the hard pastas that I keep in the cupboard. I prefer those for all different kinds of reasons. One of them is <clears throat> they cook fast. <laughs> okay. They cook fast. And that's an issue. Like, I don't want to be waiting 20 minutes for the, oh, man, I didn't get rid of those. Luckily we have another pair. Um, alrighty. We are finished with the parrot. We are on to... Another round of the, um, oops, come back, come back. There we go. The flamingo. Okay. Oh, there's a snowy hair. I've, I've been moving some stuff around and I've been noticing snowy hairs coming out of the old storage grates. Oh, there we go. Sally found a link for the fruit loaf. Thank you, Sally. Um, uh, John likes English muffins hot with peanut butter and but with butter and peanut butter. See, John, I can, I can go the English hot muffins. I can go the English hot muffins with peanut butter, but I am in camp. No butter. If you have peanut butter, who, we, I think we've had this discussion before, but if you, um, if you like peanut butter or peanut paste, wherever you're from. Do you put butter or margarine with it or do you just have the peanut butter on its own? I just go the peanut butter and let it get all melty and gooey on the toast. That's, that's my preferred uh, method. But tell me what you like in the chat. 
we have started in, with the food early today. I'm like sitting here thinking, am I hungry? Is that why I've started in early with the food? No, it's because I was talking with a dietitian. That's why. Um, oh, I can say why you're in sewing paralysis. Gamer widows, I'm going to say it right now. So, so you've got like five seconds to change your mind. And five, four, actually, I think there's a 20 second delay. So I should possibly wait for the delay. No butter for P Penella Peard. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have butter with it. Um, I, in saying that, I do use a lot of peanut butter. Like, it's, it's, not a, it's not a mere scraping. It's a lot. It's a lot of peanut butter. Like, like I, it's probably just, it's probably no healthier. It's just a flavor profile thing that I prefer to have no butter. Megan has butter as well. Peanut butter, but add Nutella. Breakfast of champions. Oh, really? I don't know about that. I mean, I haven't tried it, so I, 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 I can't say. But I have had peanut butter with butter because my mum used to have it that way. And I can't, I can't do it. My husband has no butter with jam on toast. And I'm just like, dude, that's wrong. You need butter and jam together. They go together. Amazing. Okay. Game Widow says go ahead. So our Game Widows here in the chat has managed to secure herself a stall at the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. So if you're in Australia and you're planning to head to Bendigo in July for the biggest wool show that we have here in the country, Game Widows has secured a stall. So you'll be able to go and check out all of her amazing fabrics, even the ones she can't put on Etsy, and choose the gorgeous, delicious, like you can, you can buy like a all the beautiful humbugs in all the myriad of fabrics as well as her other project baskets so i happen to have just emptied one so i happen to have i don't know what size this one is but game widows made me one that's got it's got marvel on the outside and dc on the inside because secretly i like both um so and it's freestanding they're great it's like a little they're solid. These sit like it's it's standing. It's empty, and it's standing up. Oops, there we go. And there's a little pocket in. There's a little pocket so you can put your stuff aside and so you don't lose it in the bottom. So you can get all of her cool totes and project bags and all the good stuff from a stall location to be told later. We don't know where it is yet. Um at the Benigo Sheep and Wool Show. So, and even if you don't need a project bag, you need to go and say hi. So I'm sure we'll mention it again to remind everybody um, to go and say hi if they're hitting the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. But it's so exciting because it's hard to get in and she's managed to get in. So I'm thrilled. I'm totally over the moon that she's in. So congratulations, Gamer Widows. All the hype. Oh, wait, I've got a hype hand. Where's my hype hand? Do I have a hype hand? Maybe I don't have it set up anymore. I thought I had hype hand. Hang on. I'm just going to change screens to see if it's in another screen. They are. There we go. They're only in one scene. That's dumb. So we'll have some hype. Hype, hype. Hype. Oh, just play. Just, just play. It's not letting me do it. Oh, I probably moved the file and now it doesn't know where the file is. Yep. Man, so annoying. I had all these hype things. I should probably have checked them. I will. I moved everything around on my computer, so yeah, they they are not there. They're not there anymore. So let's go back here. Sorry, but all the hype, all the like, woot woot from us. Um, there may even be a sound effect. Hang on a second. I think there's a sound effect board. Sound effects. Where are the sound effects? Um. Sound effects. Okay, so here we go. We got. Well, I don't know how loud it's going to be, so I'm super sorry. But here, <laughs> we got sound. We got a sound effect. So, 
Yeah, potty no. <laughs> All right, it's having too much fun. Um, Freaky, uh, it's in the Warcraft section. Yes, it is. It's in the Warcraft section. But they have a few different, um, a few different spots they can stick people. So we're just not quite sure which building you're in yet. Um, Freaky says that they that he hopes you sell everything. Um, well, I hope she doesn't quite sell everything because she's also got the big wool show and the fibrific retreat. Um, Amelia Nicole has a suggestion for game widows. <laughs> Bianca says, "Okay, I'm awake." <laughs> Was it super loud? <laughs> I haven't used those ones before, so I hadn't tested them. So, I don't think, I actually don't know if there's a way that I can adjust the volume on those. They're set up differently. <laughs> okay, I won't play with those anymore. Because I don't, I don't have the same controls. I don't think. Maybe not. I don't know. Goodness me. I actually, you know what? I'm not normally a red and a pink together fan. And, like, if we did black and white shots, they would match for sure. Same with this softer pink here. They're not, they're not, um, tonally different enough for this particular project. But I actually think that they would be cool, especially if you wanted to do something just a little bit subtle. Like, if you wanted to do, like, a, a pink top with a red heart, but you didn't want the red heart to be totally crazy. Um... Sandy said, literally just jumped out of my chair so deep in concentration. Sorry. I'm sorry. Much louder than my speaking volume. Okay. All right. I won't play with those anymore. I'll, I'll even I'll even X the screen off so I'm not tempted to just upset you like by clicking on the glockenspiel. <laughs> it's gone now. I took it off the screen so I wasn't tempted to hit the buttons anymore. Okay. Oh, I probably could adjust the volume with the sound effect main volume slider, but that would also change the volume slider of the its dice roll time. So, yeah, I don't want to do that. We finally got happy with the volume for its dice roll time. Um, okay. Uh, lol from Sally. Lol. Goodness me. Okay, so... Yeah, so basically this week, I all I've done craft-wise was finish off, um, finish off the yellow duckling row, add on that row, so that we could have a dice roll straight away, which we'll do again next week if we're in a point where, um, you know, like I can get us up to ready to have a dice roll straight away at the start of the week. I will legit do that. Actually, I need to write down the dice number because I'm keeping a little chart to see how keeping a little chart on everything anyway. Um, I have also done more on Dad's blanket on the border. There's only a few more rounds to go and it's done. And I don't know why I started a new project when I could be finishing off that one. But anyway, started a new project to use. up. Uh, what it is, is the yarn in that box is annoying me. The bo Well, not the yarn. The box is annoying me. So I need to get rid of the box. So to get rid of the box, I have to use up the yarn. Um... You just need to increase your mic. I mean, I, ca I can't. Oh, I can. Look, I will. Hopefully that will. Um, that's just increased the mic volume a little. I just don't want it to be too clippy. Because, you know, you guys, what happens is I talk at like a standard volume, right? And then I'll do something like laugh. And then blow eardrums and clip microphones and, and all that sort of stuff. So, um. Yeah, was that did that increase the volume much for you guys? I just I gave it a little tweak up. I just don't want to blow everything out of the water. Um I just have water in my cup today, but let me know what's in your cup today. Did you get the storm? I did get the storm this morning actually, like um, we, it was very, very wet here. It's, and it's actually the temperature is, I'm in a long sleeve t-shirt. It's not cold, 
but it's definitely cooler and this is my favorite comfy shirt so I wanted to wear it and I haven't been able to wear it for the last couple of weeks because it's been too hot so it's like less than a million degrees so I can wear my long sleeve t-shirt um let me just keep going here Iced decaf coffee for Angela. Nice. I've actually got to make up another batch of cold brew. I drank it all and then cleaned out the pot and put it away and didn't make a new pot. So I've had no cold brew and then it's too hot for coffee. So I haven't been caffeinating. So then I've been snoozing. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's on a job list for this afternoon. Before I go to Caffeinated Crafters, make a new cold brew. Alison Keys has Napoli Nespresso in in her cup. Uh, Friday says muggy is soup here again today. I think what's happened is Abby's bedroom air conditioner was on last night, and I may not have turned it off this morning, and I may have my fan blowing on me, which is sucking the air conditioning out of her bedroom. So I feel great. I'm at that perfect temperature where everything's just, just nice. It's like I I can't even tell you what the temperature. It's probably I would say it's probably like twenty degrees because that's my favorite temperature. Is twenty degrees. Where it's warm enough, but it's not cold, and it's not hot, and I'm not melting. I don't like melting. Why do I live in the subtropics if I don't like melting? Don't I don't know. No idea. What was I thinking? I don't know if I would be better off in a colder climate or not. I think about it every now and again. I think, oh man, it'd be so good to just like go and live in Canada where it's just heaps colder. But then I'm like, do I want to deal with snow? I don't know. I've never touched snow. So do I want to live in snow? I have, I have no baseline. And then I hear about like some of the terrible things that happens because of snow. And I'm like, um, you know, heat's pretty annoying, but it can't crush you with an avalanche. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the best answers are here. I definitely want to go and hang out in some snow, but I have to wait till my legs are a bit stronger under me and can, you know, not slide and make me fall down. Um, Sally's put the heater on. Wow, Sally. Uh, Alison says, I'm happy it's only getting to 24 here today and she loves the snow. I, yeah. Abby loves the snow. That's one of her big plans this year. Is she wants to go skiing again. Um, I don't know if she's going to get to go, but she really wants to go. This blanket is so soft, you guys. I just wish you could see how squishy it is. Leanne says, Canada, lol. You could go to Tassie or Victoria. But they get just as hot as we do. I want to go somewhere where it doesn't get hot like this. Like... Yeah. Tassie can have 40 degree days and so can and so can Victoria. And Victoria has like these asthma events where there's asthma storms. And I'm like, dude, I'm not down for that. Um John says cold is better because you can always put on more layers to warm up. If you're hot, you can't take enough layers off. I agree with you exactly um but rebecca is tired of snow i get that molly says it's 16 degrees here in adelaide yeah but you guys get 40 degree days too i'm looking for somewhere that doesn't do 40 degree days even rarely so i, I and 40 degrees c which is what is that 101 102 f i don't know let me look Google um, 40 degrees C to Fahrenheit is 104. 104. I would like to stay under 104 Fahrenheit at all times. Pretty please. I don't like it. Um, really warm here today. Temperature was 81, but heat index was 91. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, I, it's frustrating because we've been having these days here that are like 
the temperature is like 27 but it's actually 35 like feels like 35s um am i doing the right thing here yes i am um only so much you can take off yeah last time i was in melbourne they were having a heat wave but the wind had me in my sheepskin jacket ouch bianca says iceland's nice <laughs> yeah like i hear some really good things about some of these nordic countries and i'm like i think i could like that i but, and i was like there was i was in a live stream well li i was listening i wasn't in no it was a, it was a clubhouse chat that's what it was i was just listening and they were talking about you know, people living in the country versus the city and, and what do they actually feel that they need. And for me, it's like a good internet connection, um, a decent grocery store and access and, and post delivery, regular post delivery. And and I'm, I'm good to go. I can pretty well go anywhere as long as I have access to those things. Um, Angela says it's seven degrees in Indianapolis. Nice. Um, after my experience with snow when I was little, I don't think I would ever live anywhere where it snows. Cool. John says, we haven't really had any snow this winter. It's four degrees. I went to get the kids from school in just a t-shirt. Look, I don't think I'd be going out in a t-shirt in four degrees, but we get, like, during winter, overnight temperatures here can drop down to sort of four to six. And I would like a long sleeve t-shirt at least, honestly. Um... So, yeah, I definitely, um, definitely would like a long sleeve t-shirt at least. Also shoes and socks. So, because if my toes get cold, that's it. Game over. Iceland's nice. Tinner collaborations and cheap wool. Yeah, like seriously. Like ser I can go to the grocery store and buy good wool in Iceland. Like not here. Like our grocery store, we can buy rubbish wool if we if we if we really want. There's always something there. Um, if Iceland doesn't work, you could try Finland. Yes, like you know, moving to those Nordic countries really does open up some options. I missed a stitch. I think I did. There we go. Um, lucky I worked it out now because that would suck later. Um, like all the times that I've realised I've snuck in five and I've had to jimmy them I don't think I'm going anywhere truth be told I think I'm just going to pull on my big girl pants and suck up the temperature and just go oh well it's hot you know live with it I would like to if I have to live here I would like to live somewhere where I at least get a sea breeze I miss the sea air so much my lungs miss the sea air whenever I go anywhere near like because I grew up sunshine coast way so my my it's like my lungs know when i'm home because i just breathe so much easier there it's just beautiful and i joke i've got a friend who lives up there and i joke i'm like can i just come up and breathe some air and they're like yes so i just go up for the day hang out breathe air go down near the beach so i can breathe in more air um Friday Ketchup says, good yarn shop, good restaurants, good grocery shop, public transport. Yeah, see, like, my list is so much shorter than that. Um, I was, like, rummaging around in here because I've had an issue with my office. Like, I haven't shared it because it's, it's a dumb thing, right? It's so dumb. It's definitely a first world problem, okay? I just need to clarify this. Um, I have a Bluetooth speaker that I usually connect to now that I'm on the Mac Mini because the Mac Mini speakers are awful right they are awful and they're just awful and i don't like them at all even just for notifications and stuff but what happens is if i pause a video and like or have to take a call or whatever i'm doing the bluetooth speakers disconnect and then i have to come in reconnect the bluetooth speakers and then get you know whatever i'm doing going again right and it was just frustrating and it was happening multiple times a day and I just you know it was just annoying me so I was like online looking at other options for speakers that were hard lined in I've got the option for like the 3.5 mil speakers I wanted something that had their own power on and off 
a hard line connector that wasn't a disconnect every 14 seconds to tick me off. And I was sitting there and I was like watching something. My husband's come in and he like, I have the speaker over here. So it's like, I'll have like a movie on like, like a blockbuster, like going really loud. Right. Well, I'm just, you know, writing a script or something. And, um, and I've paused it and we were chatting and it disconnected. And because he'd been like for weeks, he's like, I don't see what the problem is. I don't see what the problem is. And then it disconnected and it makes this noise when it disconnects, right? And then I just, I pressed play on the movie again. And then it was coming through the Mac and it was like, nying, nying, nying. and it was, and he was just like, okay, all right, I see the problem, but don't buy speakers. I'm like, well, what other options do we have? All our speakers are Bluetooth speakers. He's like, what about the old speakers off the old desktop that we just don't use anymore? I'm like, it's got speakers somewhere. And he was like, yeah, you bought them. Well, I now have in here a three speaker system with a little subwoofer under my desk. And I, you know, was trying to sort out because they were like the little ones that stand on their side and they were blocking things. And I've got monitors I move around and they're in the way. So I actually took their little stands up and I've laid them on their sides. And, um, and they're awesome now. <laughs> they do exactly what I want them to do. And now I, Tim came in because I was testing everything out, making sure it was all like the audio was still good. And he's just like, you're never leaving this room now, are you? Like, you're never leaving. Look at this. You've made a nest. It's a nest. So I'm like, yeah, pretty much. I've got craft, easy access to a bathroom in the kitchen. Uh, everything's good. <laughs> so um, I can walk out my back. Oh, right. Are you that close to the ocean, John? Oh, I'm, I'm a bit jealous. Um, except at low tide fair enough um, Bianca has PC speakers hooked up to my TV our TVs have um, they've got their own surround sounds so now four and one four oh, yay when you get to the end of a row and you've got the right number um, freaky oh I never be close to the ocean waters when enjoying fresh air I can't swim oh okay all right. My mum made sure we all knew how to swim because she was an avid swimmer. So we all had to learn. Okay, it is it is dice roll time. Dice roll time. Everyone ready for the dice roll noise? It's dice roll time. It's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time. Roll the dice to choose the next colour. So we've done the fight, we've done that one, so let's use the yellow dice this time. Alrighty, let's see. I really want an eight, you guys. Like, there's still other colors here we haven't used, but I want an eight for fun, okay? We've got a four. I mean, that's cool. We've used Galar before. What color haven't we used? We haven't used, so we've, so we've used this one. We've used that one. We've used this one. We've used this one and that one. Oh, we, okay. We haven't used one and two yet. All right. All right. But we have four. I'll write four on my little list. Four. We're going to grab the galah. How are you doing down there, Lulu? Are you just twitching your face? Why don't you have any toys or anything? So Abby was out late last night. Louis decided to stay up to be a good guard dog. When Abby came in, she let the cat out. So then Louis had to be a good cat friend and stay up and guard his cat friend out the window. And he kept barking. So we had to bring him into our bedroom and close the door. Right? Uh, oh, did I miss a question? Oh, that sounded like me, but my lips never moved. Oh, okay. Sorry. That took me a second to realize because the answer is yes, it is me. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Um... Yeah, so then, um, so Abby got in at about 12.30, then um, Louis, um, hang on, I've, I'll go back and find the question. Oh, thank you, Freaky. Okay. If a pattern calls for a DK weight, but the color I want is in fingering weight, how can I convert it? Okay, so you're going to have to do, oh, here we go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, here we go, bring, where's that comment gone? Bring it back on screen. 
um, you're going to have to do make some decisions because holding two together is not going to make a DK. That's going to make it worsted weight, okay? So what I would suggest is hold two together and swatch it and see what happens. So depending on the, the fingering weight, it might be a light fingering weight, which means it could be closer to a DK weight and just some either mathing out or an adjustment in the size that you make could make the difference. But if it's a bulky DK weight, then, uh, sorry, if it's a bulky fingering weight, then it's going to make some big changes. But the only way you're going to be able to work it out is if you hold the two together and do a good size sw like swatch. You're going to need a full size swatch for this because you're going to need to be able to have a clear four inches in the middle. So you need to have an extra at least inch around all the both sides. So your swatch needs to be at least six inches long and at least six inches high because you need to have the... Um, the, the middle section without any curling, rolling or stretching, okay? So that you can get good information and you need to make the swatch in the pattern that the swatch is saying in. You've got to do everything that whether or not you normally do. Now, it could work perfectly and that would be awesome and that's the ultimate goal. But the chances are you're going to have to do some calculations and some math to adjust the pattern. There's no way to adjust the yarn. So the, the least amount you can do is hold two together and that will get you up to either a heavy DK or a worsted weight. But then the DK that they, they want you to use could be a heavy DK moving into a worsted weight. This one is branded as a DK, but it is most certainly a very heavy DK. I would actually consider it to be a heavy worsted. Um, so you're not going to know until you swatch. I, I hope that helps. Um, I'm just going to see if there's any other, any other bits that I missed on that question. I, I can't see it. Was that the whole question? Let me know in the chat. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah. Alrighty, I think that's it. Um, so we'll go back to the crocheting, back to the crocheting now, and let me know, Rebecca, if that is that, if that helped. Yeah. Anyway, so I was saying Louis is a slug dog today because Louis was up all night, and then he was barking. Um, and then you know we brought him in, and then he's just been snoozy all day. He did not want to get out of bed. If it's a shawl she's making, she, you probably got a lot more ability to allow for it and just get more of the yarn. Um, if it's like a garment, it's much trickier. But if it's a shawl or a blanket, you tend to have a lot more flexibility. So um, you'll end up with just a bigger garment and you might need to go up a needle size to make sure it's the, the um, or a hook size to make sure it would... Um, drape the right way uh, and just make sure you buy plenty of the yarn so you know if it's a 400 meter yarn but the DK you know is 200 meters holding two together will be slightly over 400 meters so you'll just need extras you'll need to make sure you know you've got plenty enough yarn um, Angela is up most of the night I feel you Louis yeah Louis the guard dog king like the day we get the, the Louis cam going is the day that Louis just lays there like a slug. Good job, Louis. Way to be an internet star. That's okay, because Snowy did the same thing when we had Snowy cam. <clears throat> oh, I split my yarn. I'll have to fix that. Substituting yarns is a difficult topic. Absolutely. There's so many important factors. It's not just the length and the, the width. It's what the yarn's made out of. Hang on. I think that's cat hair. Tibbles, have you been in my workroom, you little stinker? He comes in sometimes. 
So I did something that turned out to be quite controversial this week. Um, I washed all my mouse pads and desk pads, right? I do that every now and again, every couple of months. Not, not, not as often as I thought I should do it. But it turns out there are people out there. There are people in the world who use their desk pad or mouse pad, like this is a big desk pad. It's made out of like wetsuit material. And they have never washed it. I'm like, dude, mine gets so dirty. Like I lean on it and yeah, I can't imagine not washing it. Anyway, um, I thought the issue was going to be that I don't wash it often enough, but it turns out people didn't realize that they could, um, they could toss them in the washing machine. I mean, obviously it depends on how it's made, but yeah. Uh, I called out today, took my pills last night. One of them stuck in the bottom of my throat and sat there melting all night. Was awake all night. Oh, no. And it's frustrating. Like, sometimes with those ones, I mean, for me, I'll go and grab, like, a banana or a cracker or something and try to dislodge it. Like, by eating something, not just by poking food at it. Freaky. Um, but... Sometimes there's nothing you can do. It's just stuck on this stupid little throat shelf. Well, that's how I picture it anyway, like a little ledge. <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. You probably could make it bigger by adding in additional repeats, but you will need additional yarn. So, yeah. But you could also just make it straight up in the four ply and just make it bigger. It won't be as dense. Um, but you'll need to double check the pattern because some of them don't really have a, a natural spot where you could just keep doing that bit over and over again. Um, but yeah, there's definitely people out here there who um, do it. I really do like all these colors. I don't know if they all work awesomely as contrasts for this pink, but they all definitely look awesome. And it's so squishy. So much squish. I'm going to have to make up Louis a Louis frame. Should I make Louis's frame the same as my frame or should I try and make his a little different? Um, oh, she did ask if she could convert the pattern to fit the fingering weight. Oh, whereas I was thinking convert the fingering weight to fit the pattern. I understand now. Um, look, yeah, some patterns you can. <clears throat> you'll need to, you'll need to sit down and do some mathings. But yeah, some patterns you can adjust. Actually, most patterns you can. You've just got to know how to. It's not really my strength. Um, but it, I know it can totally be done. But usually there's like a, a point, especially in shawl patterns, there's usually a point where they're like, if you want to make it bigger, just do this section again. And you could do those sections a few times to increase the size of your pattern. But it will be just under, like, it'll be just under half the size. Because um, obviously you go down your hook or needle size to match the yarn. So you need to, you know, do more repeats. And depending on the pattern, my brain's going at 100 miles an hour now. Depending on the pattern, um, they normally have like, like you know, the beginning section, a middle section, and then the end with like multiple repeats in the middle. You could add in additional repeats, like a couple of extras on each side, depending on the shape of the pattern. If you put the pattern over in the fun zone, we can have a look at it and see if, um, like just, just a link to the pattern. And we can, if it's a freebie, we can have a look at it and see, make some suggestions. Yeah, the, the stitch multiples definitely help for sure. Um, but that, yeah, but we're not going to know till we, we actually look and see the pattern. Yeah, I was thinking a little dog bone frame, like, like shaped like my one, but like, you know, white with little black dog bones or something. That would be cute. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Lots of good advice here in the chat from people who actually re realised what the question was too. Because I just went to automatically to adjust the yarn rather than adjust the pattern. Okay, we are powering through. Uh, you going to burn his... I'm not going to burn his dog bones. Goodness me. Francis, I made a huge mistake. I entered the hand spun in Sydney's to show. Forgot to put the drop off date in my calendar. Checked the... Oh, paperwork. Oh, my gosh. And if you're late, they're, you're out. They're so strict on the rules. They're so strict. Oh, Francis. Oh, man. Found a free dragon egg pattern on Ravelry. Has it got lots of lots of people have made it and lots of comments and notes and things that you can check? There was a really popular one a while back that a lot of people made. Angela and the broadcast. Nine months of membership. I want to thank you all for making this a safe space. Angela, you are more than welcome and thank you for being a member for nine months and making this a fun space for me as well. Gosh. Yeah, freaky. I, I don't know what the rules... Like, different shows have got different rules and some are a bit more lax than others, but the... The Royal Easter Show, um, is it the Royal Easter? The, yeah, the Sydney Easter Show, their rules are like set in stone. If you're 10 minutes late, you've missed out. You didn't check for any of that? I'm just looking. Oh, I'm just hooking. Yeah, fair enough. I love that you're making all the kids dice bags. I think that's so cool. We are nearly at the end of the row. Goodness me. How's everybody else's projects going? And those of you that are working along with me, are you running ahead and rolling your own dice? And Because I want to see photos in the fun zone. I want to see how everyone's going. I saw Sandy's last week. Love the colour choices. Yeah, I rang them. They said no. Yeah. I mean, always worth a check, but they're pretty strict. And you've got to fill out, like, every single, um, like, space on the form. And if they ask you for an intended purpose, you need to add an intended purpose that that yarn will work for. Because they will look at it and go, hmm, no. That won't work for that. They'll know. Oh, first lining's cut out. Yay! Oh, yeah, definitely. I would be asking for my entry fee back. I'm making a shawlette for my mum's birthday as a surprise. I even ordered her a pretty peacock brooch to go with it. That sounds lovely. <laughs> I love this. I have things like this as well. I have a sock in the naughty basket thinking long and hard about what it did. Goodness me. I'm just going to move those to the middle so that they're not quite so much on top of the dog. Lisby's in the chat. Doing a pair of top socks. It's fun learning new things. Yes. Holly says, I'm only working on my blanket with you on Wednesday. Okay, as in the blanket doesn't get any work on it or you just work with me on it. 
because mine only gets worked on when uh, your Wednesdays as well. So my Thursdays, your Wednesdays. And then I actually sit down straight after the live stream and get it ready for next week as well. So that I, I don't forget because, you know, I could forget. Yeah. Um, I need to remove that from... The, I wish this software had a bigger button for the remove from the broadcast. It's very little. It's very tiny. Um, I have been also watching Picard, The Mandalorian. So they drops each week. And I've gone back to start re-watching Deep Space Nine. Which, it's been a long time since I've done the Deep Space Nine rewatch. I still haven't been able to bring myself to watch the final season of Supernatural. I'll get there. I'll get strong. Um, oh, Game of Widows' brother has just announced he'll be running blacksmith classes in May. That's awesome. So if you're in New South Wales and you want to do that. No, Victoria. He's in Victoria. And if you want to do that, you can probably contact. I don't know. How do you find out? Um... I'm prepping my hand spun to dye for my woven blanket project. That's fantastic. Oh, Holly, uh, thank you. I'm, so that makes me feel like I'm not working alone. Oh, you're a champion. But I dedicate this project for live chat only. Oh, thanks. Lovely. Um, uh... I thought our chances for a wild card today would be pretty high. How many colours have we not used yet, please? Uh, we have not yet used um, colours uh, one. Oh, I have to remove that. One and two. So those two colours we haven't used yet. Um, And I, I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping I've, I've set up a voting form, everything, everything's ready, I think. Oh, well, you will find out like when it's time to use it, if I, everything's a big old failure. Um, yeah. All right. We're on to back on to, we've finished our galah and we're back on to Flamingo. And then, then we'll be on to another dice roll, hopefully. You know, time permitting. I, I, I'm trying to work quickly so that we can get to four. Because we've, be, we've had three consistently for the last couple of weeks. I would prefer four. Four feels like a better number for me. You know, we've got four rows of four. Our, our, we've got as we're using a four stitch brick. Four and four. I mean, it's technically eight, right? Um, making Molly's bag from some yarn she picked out at the thrift store, lavender, white, and pink. But it feels weird. I don't like it. Oh, really? Like, is it crunchy or like what about it? Don't you like? Or is it just the colours? Oh, I can't imagine that you wouldn't like something just because of the colours. Um, Ruth has started a new project. It's a shawl by It's All in a Nutshell. That sounds like a cool fun name. Um, uh, neither have I. I. What I do is because I'm trying to be very good, right? And I, and I, I, I really do suck at being very good. Um, and I try to save all of my new episodes for Sunday morning. So Saturday night, I work quite late. And so I'm, a, I'm a pretty much a zombie Sunday. So I don't make any Sunday plans. And I sit on the couch until like 1 p.m. in my pajamas watching shows. <laughs> Basically until Tim and Abby yell at me that I, it's after midday. And you're not allowed to be in your pajamas after midday. Um... Yeah, 
Otherwise, I would just stay in those pajamas and then put fresh pajamas on later. Like, I, I don't see the problem, but they see a problem. Like, I would put on fresh pajamas to go to bed in. I would have a shower and fresh pajamas and then go to bed. I wouldn't just crawl out of the lounge room and then go to bed. That's that's not my pace. That's not my speed. Um, my fiancé and I are watching Star Trek, the original series, and he really dislikes Kirk. Look... Don't blame him, really. I I liked the original series for Uhura and Spock. Um, I think Kirk is a bit of a... I can't use the word that I think he is. He's, he's a bit of a butt face. Um, he's funny and he's cheeky and he's quirky and, and every... Like, I think it I think it fits the dynamic, but I don't... I, he's not my favourite person. I prefer the Kirk from the new movies, personally. I think he's he's funnier. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But I'm really enjoying Picard and I'm loving, like, there's some really interesting um, statements being made by showrunners um, because Picard finishes the third season as its final season and then also Discovery has been um, ended. There'll be nothing like the fifth season is its final season. Um, so they're talking about bringing in some mini series of different things. So I'm in Camp Legacy. Um, so those of you that are not Star Trek nerds, you may not know what I'm talking about. The new Picard has brought out like it's brought on a whole pile of the old the next generation cast. And some of them it's also bringing on their children of their characters. So it's like the legacy, like the, the next generation, next generation. Um, and there's a lot of call for like a, a series on, like a, a spin-off series, basically. So my fingers are crossed that something happens. That would be so good. Anyway, I'll back off. I'll, I'll get off my Star Trek nerd ship. Um, and I even cracked a Twitter Star Trek joke the other day and it was so bad. And I was just like, <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let me see. Angela dumping. No, because she agrees. Oh, look, yeah, there you go. Spock and Uhura every day. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, have you done any more yarn weighing? Oh, okay. So, uh, in relation to that, I, I did have a quick chat with, um, with Maker Yarns, just letting her know that what we found. Um, and it's just this particular, um, it seems to just be this, the Dirty DK, not her other yarns. They all seem to be their proper weights, if not a bit heavier, which is great. Um, so she's actually going to contact the mill and have a chat because it's not on. It's not good. So she was shocked. She hadn't weighed them. She hadn't thought she needed to, which kind of makes sense. What have I done here? Oh, oh, I see. I only gave myself three single crochets. Um, how am I going to jimmy, jimmy, jimmy that up? So if I do... Wait, no. Wow. Good job, Chantel. I'm going to put two in one spot and see if that works. I'll do it in the middle one. We'll see. Might look wrong. One, two, three, four. Hang on. Sorry. Oh, my hands are under the the thing. I'll remove that. Um. Oh, that's right. In LeVar Burton's case, it's actually one of his real-life daughters is playing his on-screen daughter. So he's got two daughters on the show. <clears throat> and one of his actual daughters is playing one of the daughters, which I just think is so cool. Okay. I Yeah, I think that can work. It's, look, it's, it's obviously a little bit of a jimmy. Like, that definitely sits nicer. But that's a bearable jimmy. That's bearable. Um... Not exactly the answer I wanted, but good she knows. I meant the amount of yarn for each. Oh, 
Um, no, I've done no more weighing. <laughs> so freaky. Yeah. Um, I really should, so I can do some more math redos. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll pop in, um, I'll, 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 well, I did the weighing out before and I'll do the math, redo, redo the maths on the weights that I got last week, which I haven't done. I just wrote them down because it probably like it's going to depend on the size of blanket that you want but I'll write down what my gauge is um my hook size and add all those notes and I'll um I haven't done it yet much to probably Kelly's chagrin which you know she's probably waiting for it to see if I actually ever do it or, or I could be just putting words in Kelly's mouth that could also be a thing um but I will go in and add a uh, Ravelry project with all of my um, all my gauge and everything as well. So it's handy for anybody who wants it. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, you posted your pattern over on the group. Excellent. Uh, might use the same suppliers as West Green Loft Yarn. She had to wait on an amended yarn order before dyeing her order for us due to skein weight issues. Yeah, it's frustrating because it comes out of the mills that way. And like, yeah, I think it's just, it's bizarre. Anyway, it is, it is an unusual sitch. It's an unusual situation. But yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have to do some extra mathing just to double check. Now, I did also go and change the batteries on my scales just to see if that made any difference on anything, and it did not. So it was not a battery issue. It was just, I think, like, one thing I learned when I was weighing out in the lounge room, uh, out in the dining room, I would have to make sure that um, if I was weighing, because our, our ceiling fan's directly over the dining table, so I'd have to make sure the ceiling fan was off and not moving and then I could weigh things so I've got a feeling that because the fans on in here that it's not helping it, the mills may need to recalibrate their scales maybe they need to I, I'm not sure how um, they're doing it but yeah um, there was definitely a shortfall on all of my skeins of of, um, of this stuff Uh, no pressure from Kelly. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. You're a champion. I, I, it's kind of like, like when I started that other project, I had Melissa's voice in my head going, do you really want to start this project or could you finish your dad's blanket before you start it? And now when it comes to Ravelry stuff, I've got Kelly's voice in my head like, hey, that could go on Ravelry. <laughs> you could put that on Ravelry. That would work. That would fit on Ravelry. That's that's exactly what this form is for yeah um but I, yeah i also know like both of you are like super nice and amazing and would never mean anything mean by any of it <laughs> because it's it's my made-up version of your voices in my own head about utilizing the different things or doing different things so bizarre anyway I'm getting there. How do I? I don't have any. Do I have any? Um. Not, not in here. It must be in another room. I was. Uh, what I was looking for was a measuring tape. <laughs> Just to see how wide it's getting. Clearly, I just need to have permission to everyone's Ravelry account so I can just update their projects. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, I'm so busy crafting. I have an assistant who does all my Ravelry updating for me. <laughs> oh, she's my Ravelry manager. <laughs> oh, my God. 
my gosh. It's not beyond the realms, you know. There are ways to set people up as team members on Ravelry. So funny. Yeah, I like the idea of calling her our Ravelry manager better than our Ravelry assistants because she manages our Ravelry. This is our Rav manager. Make it all sound all like what's like gimmicky and and like we've got our own yarn languages. We can have our own C level staff language as well, right? The Rav manager. And we're not talking about a car. Um, have, haven't updated any of my RAV projects for a long time. Oh dear. Yeah. Maybe we can have a group session of updating our Ravelry stuff. Kelly, do you have a Ravelry app that you recommend? Because Ravelry itself doesn't have its own app, but they have allowed access for other people to write apps and utilize the Ravelry data, or at least some of it, not everything. Um, I would love to know if you've got a solid app that you like, because that's probably the biggest issue is I don't always think about Ravelry when I'm on the desktop. So sometimes I'm like doing stuff on my phone and I, I do have my Ravelry account linked to my Instagram so I can just steal my photos off into Instagram and add them to my projects or at least I did. It's been a while since I've done it so I don't know if it's still there. Um, I don't use an app but Beck got one and she loves it. Okay, we'll have to I'll have to like harass Beck and find out what her app is. So you just you just you're a desktop girl. Oh Louie. We need we need some sort of censorship. <laughs> you comfy there, big boy? <laughs> oh dear. So funny. We're nearly at the end of the row. About the only time I use Ravelry is when Marley Bird does her 24 days of quickies at Christmas time. Okay. See, I love using Ravelry for, I find just about every pattern I work on in Ravelry. Um, I just don't tend to do much in the forums anymore I used to I used to be right in hanging out in the forums but I just don't really get into it that much anymore no no reasoning just t just don't um, and um, and the only reason I don't put my projects in is because I forget that's it again no real reason um, uh, I yeah, I use my PC, but I, I use it on my phone. Oh yeah, so if you just click desktop site, you just get the full. It'll give you the full site. Or or does the phone app or does the website on the phone now? Because it never used to be very good at um, being a response. Like it was not a, very, a responsive site. Like responsive means it changes things to sit better on mobile phone, tablets, computers, um, and. It never used to be a responsive site, but it's been a while since I've tried to go on it on my phone, so maybe it's better. That would be pretty cool. Okay. Um, I mainly use it to find patterns. I love being able to specify all sorts of criteria. Me too. Like yarn, it's how much of the yarn I've got you know the the yarn 
like contents like if it, if it's a cotton yarn versus a wool yarn because the pattern will be different oh tangled up in the ends and then last one flip okay Bianca's happy with how I use it on the phone Holly's happy with it okay I think it's just been a long time since I've used Ravelry on my phone Alrighty, are you guys ready? Cause it's dice roll time! It's dice roll, dice roll, dice roll, roll time. time! Roll the dice to choose the next colour. Okay. Let's roll the dice. It's a seven! So not excited by a seven. I mean, we need it. We need a good bright pop of something. So we have amphibian. Oh, Louis. Um, I was on iPad with it this week. It did okay, but I've not used it on desktop yet. Okay. All right. I'll have to have a. I'll have to have a look. I haven't even used it on my iPad, honestly. Whoops. Splitty, splitty. This hook can, it's got like a little pointy tip on the hook and it can split yarn sometimes. That's one of the things I do prefer about the clovers. They tend to be less... Yeah, I know. Like, where's the one or two or eight? I. Oh, I did roll a seven. You're right. I rolled a seven. What am I doing? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the... No, we haven't had two, the blue yet. We have not had number one, which is the orange. We have not had number two, which is the blue, and we have not had an eight, which is a um, the, the the wild card. So fixed it. It's number seven, duckling, not number six, amphibian. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was my bad. I just grabbed the wrong one. Fixed. Yep, definitely a seven. My brain just went, are you sure that wasn't a one? But definitely wasn't a one. It was definitely a seven. Okay, let's see if we can power through this. I'm going to bring it over. Uh, the search is a pretty good for Alvary on iPad. I really like this side slip out menu. Okay, cool. I'm going to sit down this afternoon after I, you know, do the jobs I've got to do and then do that. Have a little, have a little squiz on the, on the Ravelry app on my iPad. Uh, not app, Ravelry website from my iPad and my phone. Uh, waiting outside the school for the kiddo. Yep, sometimes it has to be done. <coughs> Excuse me. Try and control the raspy voice. More voice training just to try and stop the raspy voice during a live stream. So, you know, fingers are crossed I can get it to work. But lots of hydration helps. Okay. 
going on the road again. I do like this yellow. Like in the scheme of yellows, it's a nice yellow. That's a nice yellow. Let me have a look. I've knitted a vest on a 3.25 millimeter. Br br bring it over here. I've knitted a vest on a 3.25 millimeter needles and I plan to crochet a border. What size hook would I need? A very little experience with a hook. I mean, I would probably go a three mil hook. What would you guys say? Those of you in the chat, I would go a small, a slightly smaller size hook than the knitting so that it, the hook doesn't stretch out the edge of the knitting. So I'd say a two and a half to a three, depending on what the yarn can deal with. What do you guys say in the chat? What's that? Oh, it's my headphones. I'm just sitting here trying to work out what on earth that was, but it's, it's my headphones hang on a little, um, a little thing. I might move that around. No one else cares. I care. I care. Molly's the same, two and a half to a three mil. Yep. You'll have to do some little bits of testing and just double check. But yeah, you want it, I personally think you want it to be smaller because you don't want it to affect your knitted stitches. So you don't want it, you know, pushing out the ends. You want it to sort of sit nicely. Anyone else? Oh, you have a two and a half? I'll bring, um, I'll bring a three mil for you tonight as well for you to have a play with. So, yeah. Kelly says she's prob she'd probably go the two and a half. Yeah. Try it and if in doubt, rip it out. Absolutely. Give it a burl. Um, I think the smaller that you can bear, the better. But it will depend on the yarn and the, how the stitches look. So you, you have to do a little bit just to see. I like that if in doubt, rip it out. We need that on the shirt. I can't wait to put the next photo up on Instagram. It's starting to get wide enough now that it's like, do I fit in the whole amount or not? Um, yeah, bring it along tonight for sure. So if you're wondering what we're talking about, we have caffeinated crafters on tonight. It's usually not on on the fifth Thursday of the month. Um, but as next week would be the first Thursday of the month, but it's also Good Friday Eve. Um, so we weren't messing with people's traveling plans and, and what have you. We decided to pull forward a week. But the next one will be the usual third of the third Thursday of the month. Just move around a little. I feel like I've been here, sitting here for a mini. Everyone have a, have a stretch. Have a drink of water. I'm 
go from there. We've nearly finished the edit for the podcast, for the first podcast, and we're getting ready to record our next one. So we'll get those releasing soon. If you're wondering where the podcast is, it's coming. We had tech problems and we've overcome them as best we could. And we're going to move forward. We're not going to let them slow down. Um, Angela says, I get so much more crocheting done during the lives. It helps me out. Oh, Angela, do you know what? Even during the, like the, the brain fog time that was the queen, knowing that every week I was going to work on something, even just for the couple of hours of the live stream, it definitely gave me something to look forward to, like crafting time every week because I was finding all sorts of reasons to not sit and craft. And now I'm, I'm not listening to those reasons anymore, basically, because the website's just about, it's slowed right down. Um, because now it's ba it's basically nearly out of stock and then it's, um, and then if it's, um, then we just go with, with Margicraft going forward. So, yeah. Oh, I split the stitch there. Let me go back and fix that. Oh, that was the other thing I started finishing watching was the next season of CSI Vegas. I'd caught the first couple of episodes but hadn't watched any further. So I went back to the start of that season and I think it's I think it's season two. I, I get confused like because with Criminal Minds, they add, it's just in Australia, it's added on to the end of the existing Criminal Minds. Whereas with CSI Vegas, it's a new, it's not just CSI anymore. It's CSI Vegas. So it's like got its own thing. But it's still in Vegas. They're still bringing in the old cast. It wasn't a reboot. It was a continuation. So, yeah, confusing. Uh, Molly says, haha, I was just going to ask when Yanni Girls was going ahead. Yeah, we just got delayed up like it's just you know Claire's busy she's running multiple businesses um, I'm busy running multiple businesses and um, oh bug bug get away from me bug where did you come from is my question um, yeah so um, finding the time to record them is one thing but then I edit them and and the first one was you know we we found a technical error well not error but like a technical glitch that we weren't expecting so we've had to resolve that um we finished season one of yellow jackets last night I've, I've heard a lot of really good stuff about it but I've never watched it myself okay we are back Oops, to Flamingo. Join that on. Do a chain. Do the first single crochet over the tail. And then off we go. We are on to single crochet level. So I was just checking because because we're alternating how we start this one. So these ones are always single crochets and these ones alternate. And um, for those following the pattern, I've added an additional single crochet at the end and at the beginning of each row. Um, just so that when I'm doing my border, I don't eat I don't need the first stitch I just it sits in here and I think that'll just sit really nicely um, you don't even have to do a border you could weave in the ends I don't want to weave in that many ends oh freaky I've seen the the promos for night agent I just haven't I haven't been in a place to start something else new because I've been with Picard and Mandalorian so my brain space only has space for so many new things. 
Oh, and CSI Vegas. I've been watching that. That's new. Um, Friday says, I describe it. So this is, this is Yellow Jacket. I describe it as Lost meets Lord of the Flies meets Working Mums. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, Alison likes Night Agents. All right, I'll add it to my list. I also want to watch the next season of Carnival Row and the next season of... I don't know what it's called. Sword and Bones? No. It's a magic-y one. <laughs> it's a complicated show from Friday. Yeah, I can see that. It might be too much for my brain. I normally watch television shows to just zone out. But every now and again, I want something more cerebral. So I'll keep it in mind for, for, for those rare moments. I definitely enjoy re-watching old favourites. Uh, yes, you have to start from the start so as not to get lost in the storyline. Yeah. I, I, I like to start shows from the start. Shadow and Bone. Thank you, Bianca. That's the one. Season 2 of Shadow and Bone. Although I've read some not so stellar um, reviews of Season 2. It's another one. Another show where they've gone off the original content to do their own thing because they know better. Um, is it on Netflix? I think it's on Netflix. It was, it's, season one was really good. Um, yeah. Uh, the books are pretty good. Must have. I, I don't know. Friday. I haven't read the Yellow Jacket book either. Uh, yeah, Alison says that Shadow and Bones is on Netflix. There's, um, I, because you guys know, obsessed with Supernatural and all things Supernatural, um, TV series. And Richard Spate, who plays, um, Loki and Gabriel the Angel, he is directing a lot at the moment. And he's been working on a new series called The Dead Boy Detectives. It's another, it's one coming up for Netflix. And from what I'm hearing from, from like what he's been putting out in the different podcasts that he's on, um, that looks to be like another amazing show that I love. Claire, hello, you've survived your shopping trip. Oh, the book is weird for Shadow and Bone. Okay. Oh, Friday says no Shadow, and, the book for Shadow and Bones. Okay. I don't know if they do have the, um, um, anyone to do with the book because apparently it's gone seriously off script like off the, like they've really um you know messed up season two they've tried to squash too much into it kind of like what they like i i i like the wheel of time the first season of the wheel of time when it came out but there's some definite pacing and timing problems that i have with it I know they have to do some of this stuff different for TV versus, you know, a 17 book series. I get it. But there's some stuff coming up for season two that I'm just like, that is not for ages. Like, seriously. We've missed something important that explains this. So hopefully they explain it before the promo stuff happens. Um... Claire is in the house. Yes, she is. We love the we love the pattern, Claire. It's so awesome for chatting and watching TV. I'm trying to get to the fourth roll. I'm working really hard. Mm. 
and then I move a bit too quick and split the yarn. Um, oh, yeah, it's for sure off. Uh, Friday says that she's excited to see Mariah Lewis writing for Marvel. Yep. There's a lot of really interesting stuff coming out. Um, is it, it is a Louis cam. Yes, it is. I've got to make a border for it. We're going to go with um, black and white and, and little, like white with little black dog bones, I think, if I can find something. We'll make him a little little Louis cam border. We had to move him up because when we bring comments onto the screen, they would cover. Oh, I, I moved him up and then I moved the comments over a bit and put them in the middle. We could probably move him back down again. There we go. Um, the, yeah, look, I thought The Wheel of Time was a, was a good show. I liked the casting for it. The casting was great. My issue is the Wheel of Time books, like the source material. I found Randall Thor to be the most whiny, whingy, I just wanted to punch him in the throat, complainy teenage boy. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my gosh, is this going to turn into another episode one, two, and three of Star Wars where you're just like teenage, angsty Anakin, like, was, was the problem. Um, oh, you just started the series, the, the Wheel of Time series. I loved it. I loved it, except for all, like, Rand. Rand, just, I just, yeah. And don't get too attached to how she, they write the characters in the book, because the series is not the same. Uh, I watched the Banshees of in Shirin, but I didn't really like the fan of Boring. Okay, I, I don't know anything about that. I He's been totally snoozing. He's like, like he usually does sleep most of the live stream um, in his little spot there. Like that's, that's probably the most expensive dog bed in the world. That is my Udi, right, that he has claimed every time I wash it and take it back, he digs it back out again. It's his now. So my Udi and like a, a, a fleecy blanket. Oh, crochet Claire says, I opened my Maker Yarn order yesterday and the flamingo you are using is so pretty. Isn't it? It's so bright. It's so bright. Yeah, I, I, own, um, a, I own a lot of books, Holly, and I own the entire series of The Wheel of Time. I should probably start reading it again um, because just how much I love it. Um, except for Rand. Rand can die in a hole. So, you know. <laughs> That's my opinion. A lot of people really like the Rand character. And I just found him to be a bit too angsty for me. Like, yeah. Louis and you have the same Woody. Yeah, you guys do. <laughs> oh, dear. But yeah, they're just on the floor. They're just like a little spot between a spinning wheel and a crate. He's happy. I was re reshuffling and organizing stuff so that I could work over there. And he just, you know. Oh, Matt drives you crazy. Yeah, his character is fun. His character is a, is a bit of fun, for sure. Slide that forward a little, and I just notice that as I'm slouching more, um, I can I can I fix that? I'm going to touch something, and hopefully it doesn't mess with anything. No, undo. There we go. That's a bit better, right? But when we go back to the other shot, it's going to be screwed up. Oh, my camera. There we go. 
All right. Um, catching your last 10 minutes. The blanket is looking so pretty. Hey, how are you going, Beck? What's the Ravelry app that you're using? Just, you know, while you're there. <laughs> Louie doesn't need much space to get comfy. Yeah, Louie's got like maybe 50 centimetres square where he is. <laughs> Um, Louis is also six kilos or six and a half kilos. So, yeah. I need to power on. Power on so I can get to the end of the row so we can get one more dice roll in. Oops. Um, a rabbit. Okay. I'll have to check because we were talking about Ravelry earlier and um, I know that, you know, Ravelry doesn't have its own official, um, its own official mobile app, but they allowed API access so other people could make things. Well, and this is what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that having like a, a decent app might make me use it more, like especially for adding projects to stash i'll probably still use desktop for like pattern searching and stuff like that but just to be able to add patterns with ease like add projects with ease i think i'd love an app um sue says i think i love the reverse side as much as the front side oh i agree with you sue I think both sides look amazing. And with the little, like these little flip out a little bit, that just creates a little bit of texture, a little bit of movement. And it's just, I do. I love the back as much as the front. I, th I prefer the front, I think, but I do really like the back. Some blankets are just like you don't want to accidentally flip it over so you see the back of it. This is not one of those blankets. Um, yeah. It's stripey, yeah. It's legit stripes. And we all love stripes. <clears throat> um, yeah, Ravelry on my iPhone 12 mini is really clunky and not so great. The app makes searching and adding projects quick and easy. So, Rabbit. I'll have to have a look. That's my lunchtime shenanigans. I'll sit down with my phone and have a play. I did something for the first time yesterday. Are you ready? Are you all sitting down? I airdropped a file because <laughs> I've got like um, I've got Abby's old iPhone now that I'm using for my other channel so I can get iPhone footage and like iPhone screen records and I airdropped something from my computer to my phone oh this is like oh my god no no it was the other way around I airdropped a, I, I, no I did both I airdropped photos from my phone to the computer and then I airdropped a video file from my computer to my phone. So, yeah, I was just like, what? Oh, my God. I, I don't know what's happening to me. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, the back looks amazing. Um, I'm just going to... B-roll is fun. Yes, B-roll is fun. Um, I love finding good B-roll. Oh, Claire is celebrating membership, 17 months of membership and still loving my videos. Thank you, Claire. I still love making them, so that's why they're still here every now and again I do these like little audits of stuff right where it's like okay why am I doing this what is the purpose you know for some things I have to think about the return on investment I don't do that with this this is like you know what I have fun with yarn craft loving people that's the return on investment that's it and then that means I get to just keep doing this forever so you know as long as you guys keep coming and and visiting and playing and hanging out and getting involved then I will too um I thought I'll laugh but know that I really only have been using airdrop in the last year or so yeah 
Airdropping is something you can do between Apple devices. It's like a tr file transfer. Um, so, yeah. Where the heck did 17 months go? I know. I still remember the conversation we had when I was like, oh, I don't have, I don't know what to do for channel members. And then you were just like, well, this is what I do. And I was like, yeah, but you're you. <laughs> a little little snaggles but no it works it's good and it's less pressure um time flies when busy having fun or just not noticing i mean there's also that isn't it like sometimes i just think like like it is the end of march guys my daughter is 18 in like five or six days and it's, I am just like, what? <laughs> what? Um, oh, except for when you have twerps on the train, airdrop and gross pictures. Uh, yeah, I make sure, I, I turn off all those functionalities, except for when I want to use them. So that nobody can, you know, send me stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, Leanne's not bitter at all. No, look at member one sharing her membership. Leanne's member number two and and Claire beat Leanne and it was hilarious. I'm sorry, Leanne, but it really was. I let you both know at the same time. And just Claire it was just that little bit quicker. Um, Carly, good to see you. It is roll time. It's roll time. We are going to get one more roll in. We will get four rolls for this live. So it is roll time. Um, let's have a look. I'm just checking the messages. Claire, this is a highlight of my week too. Thank you for making these craft time live streams for us to enjoy. I'm just so glad you guys come. Honestly, Carly, like I, I, it's an excuse for me to sit and craft. Like I'm working. Please don't interrupt me. I'm working for the next two hours. Um, don't call me. Don't message me. I'm working. Um, you guys make it worth it, honestly, without it. All right, let's, uh, fastest finger wins. All right, let's have a go. Dice roll time. Oh, hang on. I just need to, sorry, Carly. I have to move you off the screen. There we go. It's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time. Roll the dice. Dice Choose the next color. Um, I might have had too much fun making that audio now that I think about it. All righty. Let's see what we get. Okay, ready? It's a two! We get a new colour! Two! I just want to double check. Morpho! I mean, I would prefer a wild, personally. This one's got some serious yarn bar, like, going on. Like, serious. Like, this is this was what got pulled out of the middle. Oh my gosh, this, this is such the most prettiest, vibrant, bl bright blue dull but it, i had to dull everything down because the pink was just so hardcore i might actually trim the end off this one it looks pretty janky but we'll get it started we've got a new color we got four rolls in two i think that i think that uh they'll be happy people because this is a popular color Morpho, there we go. I'm just gonna trim that little bit of busy end off there. Oh, Kelly seems Kelly seems impressed. Kelly is happy. So let's let's get a few stitches in here to see how it looks. I know it's twelve guys. I saw the time. I just want to get a couple of stitches on so we can check it and just to see. If we just need to do a re-roll, if it's just a bad colour and just totally ditch it from the plans. I'm not doing that. FYI. I'm not doing that. Oh, yes. Oh, ho, ho. love it. Love this colour. It reminds me so much of the Tiff Blue I used to dye. Such a good colour. We haven't had blue before. No, nope, that's right. It's a new colour. So while we didn't get an eight, we got a new color. So I don't feel so, you know, like, oh man, wasted effort. It's such a pretty blue. 
Um, could give a shout out to Steph, please. Oh, is Steph here. Did I miss something? Ah, oh, hey, Steph, it's good to see you. Um, I'm not going to Bendigo this year, so I won't get to, to chat again. But it is good to see you in the live stream. And I'm happy that you're visiting your mum. So, you know. Um, we've met. Yeah, we've uh, Steph and I have met in real, real life humanings. We have. Uh, we have not had the blue before. Um, it would be nice if the yarn baby had the same yardage as the original ball, giving actually more. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? I've just got it. This is all twisted. I'm just going to. There we go. All right. I'll do a few more stitches and then I'm going to bounce for the day. I'm going to go and do some other stuff, have some lunch. Talking about all that food earlier definitely got me hungry. Um... And then what I'll do for next week is I'll make sure we're ready straight away for a new color. Okay, like we did this week. Uh, except I'll also make sure that our um, our color, our dice roll markers are in earlier. Um, so, yeah. It has been awesome hanging out with everybody. And I will, um, I will see you all next week. I'll get this all ready. We'll make sure that all the colors are uh, you know being good the pink is just so bright i'll put i'll pop our photo up on ig um with a, with a bit more of the blue done so that we can see how it looks and yeah get ready for an for a whole nother week of our math rocks blanket let if you are watching the replay and you get all the way to the end like this make sure you put in the comments down below a hi and i'll try to get back to you um, if you've got a question, I can reply to your questions in videos now, which is kind of cool. Um, and yeah, it it is definitely um, huru, as Sue has said, huru till next week. That's a very Aussie thing, huru. Um, yeah, I'll see you all next week. Bye now.